<laughs> the fucking turkey's loose. <laughs> Hundred episode so- turkey. <laughs> <laughs> Who let this turkey in the studio? <laughs> to celebrate a hundred episodes, we're killing a turkey. <laughs> 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 to celebrate 100 episodes, Steven ordered a turkey, had it sent to my house, and someone brought it in <laughs> while I had my back turned to the door. Just 100 turkeys <laughs> just <laughs> destroying your house. Congratulations. We got a, a couple burn it down, hundred get, plays. <laughs> burn, it, burn it down. Get a new, get a new fucking house. <laughs> I like that when I'm zoomed out, I can see... <laughs> Or when, when I'm not zoomed out, I can see the um, the fucking uh, uh, what's it called the the audio wave of me laughing, and it's very even. <laughs> it's like precision even. What does that mean? You got like like the spacing the, the 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 spacing on the like bursts of laughter. Is oh yeah, yeah. I've no, you are a chuckler. It comes yeah, in a, yeah yeah I'm a chuckler. It comes in like a like a Japanese like beach wave cycle where the first wave hits. <laughs> Hardest and it's ha ha ha. The wind slowly <laughs> fade back into the ocean. Uh. <laughs> God damn it! How to build a podcast <laughs> featuring the award-winning podcast host, the Trash Cats. <laughs> One hundred episodes bringing joy and love to young boys and girls. <laughs> so, so what you're going to want to do? Number one, right off the bat. Insult anyone's religious freedoms. <laughs> Silly and Muslims. Challenge challenge their uh, their rights. You don't get to believe in God, you stupid fuck. <laughs> and then and then make the audacious claim that parents love it when their kids get molested. They love it. <laughs> That's how you're gonna run a successful podcast. Oh, sweet baby Jesus. Uh Levels look good. Recording is a goober. All right, we are goobed up and good to goop. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Trash Cats Trash Cast. I'm Richard. I'm Steven. And today we're celebrating ourselves and our achievements throughout the past 100 years of the Trash Cats Trash Cast, aka the greatest and longest running podcast ever created. So many awards come and gone. It's, it's like it's like we're impervious to damage. It's pretty incredible what we've built, and we just I, need to take a second to acknowledge it. <laughs> we can. I, I do want to acknowledge it. Here's. I also want to acknowledge this: how easy it's been. So easy. It's like people. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> it's not hard. It's easy. You know how easy it is to get those first million plays. It's oh not my the, god! It's like it. It's like overnight. Like butter and bread. Except I up, hate buttering bread, and this was easier. You want you want to hear the the wild thing? And this is for everybody listening. Stephen already knows this, of course. But before we even uploaded our first episode, we had a million plays. Wild. It's insane how easy this is. And everyone makes it seem like it's difficult, but it's not. Anybody can do it. You know, that internet money has helped me be a better version of myself. I like Rich Steven. I, I do, too. Poor Steven was kind of a, a drag. He's an asshole. Yeah, but, Rich yeah. Steven really knows where it's at. I know where I'm going. I know who I am and who I am not now. <laughs> right. And you separate yourself from people that, that are not like you, uh, as you should, because you're a billionaire now. And Billion. you can't be seen with people of any lower class. Thing. Poor smelly people? No, thank you. You don't have a podcast? Then don't talk to me. It's 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 really the the audacity of people that <laughs> approach us and like we're equals. And no. I don't like when I go to Starbucks and I walk in and I say I'd like a, a tall, you know, iced coffee and they say um that'll be you know, four seventy five or whatever the fuck it costs. I don't look anymore. No. And they and they, you know, it's like, do you even know who I am? <laughs> do you don't recognize my face off of this audio medium? Are you out of your mind? I personally, I think I enjoy it most is all the cats that acknowledge me on the streets. They know what's up. Oh yeah, the street ca- the street cred's real. It's oh, yeah. real shit out here. Yeah. All the skunks we've been having in our backyard, that's not coincidence. Not at all. Now, in all seriousness, I must say, mm-hmm. pretty fucking enjoyable to have a podcast where you can make these claims. And <laughs> <laughs> no one will care at all. I fr- who was it that died? Um, 
<laughs> not not the latest royal death. Um, some rich dumb queen, right? Uh, oh, no, James Avery. No, Betty. What's Betty her name? White. Yeah, Betty White on her official Reddit. She was a queen. Let's all respect that. I, I, you know, right after she died, I thought it was important to let the world know that we had previously done our interview with her that week, and right, we decided not right. to release it out of pro- posterity. And yeah, out of respect for uh, the golden girl herself, Betty White. We we kept that in the private trash cat. Fold. It seemed tasteless. Yeah. To uh, to you know. Now that said. <laughs> We'll be releasing that one of these days, but yeah. <laughs> the internet, the whole Reddit sphere did not appreciate <laughs> <laughs> me keeping that oh, to did, did, did we get backlash on that? A little bit. We had uh, one Xanax mom on Reddit that cussed us out using upper and lowercase letters as oh, she nodded out. I could like, tell. Like the SpongeBob meme? Yep. <laughs> Patrick, no. <laughs> hey, you know that takes a lot of work, actually, to it type does. in like that. It's unless it's you're hard. because, especially if you want to make make it look like aesthetically good, you gotta like pick and choose the letters that you're using. It can't be every other because that doesn't work like that. It feels satisfying to do though. If you can do it quick, you're like wearing that shift button out on your computer. Yeah, mine's a. It looks like a battlefield. Like zoomed out at my shift key looks like a battlefield. The Civil War happened on that shift key. <laughs> the landscape is scarred. There's you see there's it. smoke settling. It's, it's actually it's haunted now. <laughs> <laughs> the ghost of the shift key. Zach Baggins is over here trying to oh, trying to investigate <laughs> your shift key. Dude, it is wild. It is wild. We did a hundred episodes, though, right? Oh, absolutely. I'm Absolutely, pretty, I'm surpri- we, every week we we were never late, except the one time I, I just didn't upload. I forgot it didn't upload right, but we've never missed a week. Yeah, that's that's all your work, by the way. That's that's nothing to do with me. Well, I mean, we both have to do. I mean, I'm not putting out episodes alone, so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, I'll, I'll take I'll take my credit that you're trying to give me, and I, uh, for showing up the week before. Yeah, yeah. And Not, sitting here. To that si- point. Sitting on my ass and talking into a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> to that point, the our, our previous episode, 99, was talking about um, the, the heroin world that I, I've been submerged in previously. It's like water world, but it's all heroin. <laughs> oh, <don't laughs> that, was hard. that was a hard one for me to listen to. That was... Oof, pretty cringy shit. I feel like <laughs> it was okay, but man, I, it would suck to do this alone, man. But I, I'm I'm impressed with us. We've done good work. Yeah, we we are um, we're definitely deserving of it, all the awards that we haven't received. We're, we'll get them someday. Yeah. But I guess it's, we should. It's inevitable. Should we start from the top? How how was your week, man? Uh, oh, it was good actually. My dad was in town. It was, uh, it was we we hung out. We got a lot of you know spend more time together since my my mom had COVID this week. Usually he stays um, in her place when he's over, but since she had COVID, he stayed in with me. So we got to spend a lot more time together. That was cool. Shouts out to pop. I know you listen, Dad. Love you, Dad. Hell yeah. I had a um, Halloween party for some friends, close family, You're coworkers. All f- franked up. Yeah, man, I had the, the fucking the Frankenstein, the summer Frankenstein. That was the good shit. It looked good. I got to, you know, work on making the mask a little bit more comfortable to wear, but it looked good. One year uh, as a kid, I was a trash can, and I literally <laughs> just put two holes in the can and had my arms hang out. And it got That's, so hot and uncomfortable, like, just like those masks. It's brutal after, like, ten minutes. That was like an omen. That's like... um like you knew, you saw it coming. That was like aspirational. <laughs> like one day, one day I'll be trash. <laughs> I too will become trash. I always knew deep down inside I was a piece of garbage. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're here to prove it. Go fast, inject trash. That made uh, me so happy. Yeah. <laughs> what a great line. Uh, how was your week? Oh, man. To be honest, it's been... I'm going to try to lean into the mic, I guess. A hundred episodes of practice, and I, I still don't feel like talking to the <laughs> microphone. Uh, it, it's been kind of a shitty week, but today's been pretty chill. So I I, I find I 
I work out <clears throat> every day. Not in the best of shape, but I do something every fucking day. And I hadn't been going to the gym, like to a gym, since COVID. And mm-hmm. I finally got back into the good old YMCA. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Been going there since preschool. I had my first playground scraps at the YMCA. Been you know, going the, there forever. Uh, the, the one, you can bleep this if you want to. You go to the one over on... Uh, and- oh, yeah, yeah. Looking at old men's dicks every week. Yeah, I was just gonna say I used to do life. I used to yeah. do swim lessons there, and it was just old dude dicks. How did we long. never meet at? Because I swam for like ever. I didn't. I wasn't in it that long. I just okay. went to like, learn how to swim, and then um, we've I did, been in the pool at the same time before and didn't know each other. Probably. That's so wild, trippy. I, I did um, what the fuck's it called? Uh, basketball classes over there. Yeah, I did a little bit of that. Not not so much there, but a little bit. But I'm finally back at the gym, primarily for the sauna. That that's I've missed the most about COVID. I'm a big sauna guy. Oh, I fucking I, I feel you. I've never done a real sauna before. What? I've done I've done where I take a take a towel and I shove it underneath the bathroom door and that get the water good and running. That's one tenth of a real sauna. Oh man, I bet it's fantastic, dude. It because really I like is. that a lot. It's That's some good shit. It's so fucking good. Like I will, I'll do it till I'm on the brink of death. Like I sit in there. <laughs> I, I I would too. Honestly, it, I don't have any fucking discipline for that. It's like this feels really good. The feeling of being that depleted, you're like buzzing. You're all fucking emptied out, and then the feeling of going back into the cold air after and feeling yourself like come back to life is exhilarating. That is, that's it's my like a, favorite. It's like a mini OD. A <laughs> little bit, a little bit. So today- That's how, you know, that's how Steven gets his fix. <laughs> that's, that really is about as close as I get now. But so today on podcast days, I tried to eat Indian food. And I'm trying to go to the gym before recording, hence me being very late today. <laughs> so I hadn't ate anything all day. I think I had like an apple and it was uh, it was like five, six o'clock. Hadn't ate anything. I was getting pretty hungry, but I needed to go to the gym first. So I ended up getting a monster. I haven't been drinking them much. Got my caffeine mints, but I'm off I'm off the monsters right now. So I'm having a monster. On the way to the gym, I had to make a stop because I don't have any good shower shoes right now. And everyone got rid of of, uh, flip-flops because they got the moccasins, like winter shit now. Yep. Went to two, three different stores. No one had them. But you know what I did find? What's that? A big bag of Dove chocolates. Ooh, hell yeah. Now- I don't think I've Perfect ever. Sauna. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever had anything so satisfying as eating a bag of Dove chocolate as it melts in a sauna. <laughs> oh my god! I was a king. People would walk in. I'm just covered in <laughs> syrup juice and say, "Get out! This is my chocolate kingdom. Leave me." I ate a whole bag of Dove chocolate and sat in the sauna till I felt sick, and then I went home and ate Indian food. Now, <laughs> now I'm here trying to keep it together. Wait, wait, wait. Did you did you did you work out at the gym? Or you just went for the sauna. I did. I worked out for. I okay. I had I picture you just walking into the YMCA, hitting, hitting up the sauna, and getting chocolate all over the place, and then you're like, "All right, I came." So I'm, I would do that while I was high all the time because I'd have to beat these drug tests for probation and shit. <laughs> so I'd be like doing a little bit of heroin, going to the YMCA, trying to sweat it out in the sauna for five Shut hours. <laughs> I got to pass my drug test, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna do drugs first, I know and I got then I'm gonna go to the sauna. Did, did that actually work for you? I have never failed a drug test for anything I prepared for. I'll put it that way. And I That's went to clinics for, you know, six years. I had to pass a test every month. I've had probation tests. Never failed one, ever. 
Now, for a long time, I would use the the fake dicks. Mm-hmm. Pretty funny experiences when you're dope sick sitting in a, in a car prepping your, your dildo diaper yeah. thing, <laughs> trying to keep the piss at the right temperature. Pretty goofy stuff. And then I found out you could just pay the employees that didn't want to work there. So you would just oh, yeah. you yeah. would just pay them off. They give you a clean test, bada bing, bada boom. Pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> they give you the cup and you give them back the cup with like, you know, a hundred dollar bill. Like, how about how about you finish this for me? Yeah. It did take a little while to figure that out. Cause if you, I mean, if you go to the wrong employee with that. You're yeah, fucked. you gotta, you gotta be, you gotta go, Discern. you gotta get drug tested a few times at the same place before you realize. Yes, <laughs> you gotta be. You scope out their situations and all that. Definitely, but I, I got it down to a science. But you can get well, weeds the hardest to get out of your system in time. Mm-hmm. Sauna dehydrations, extra hydration, that shit sucks. But everything else you can get out in a day or two if you go hard as fuck. Oh, I didn't know that. I, I knew, I knew weed. Was kind of difficult to get out. I didn't realize it was harder than I mean, heroin or something. Hero. I mean, it's all it's all based on half lives. That would the bio- mm. half life is the amount of time it takes for your body to process half of the drug through your metabolism or whatever. So, like, you think of like smoking weed, you could take a couple hits and be high for hours and hours sometimes. But heroin, meth, what whatever. Like you think of that stuff, you know, it's it hits you instantly and typically doesn't last that long. I think heroin has a half life of seven to eleven minutes. So every seven to eleven minutes that pass, half of it has been digested. So in theory, a really good test can pick it up like a week or whatever. But if uh, if you go to extreme measures, you can really move it through your system pretty quick. But it's all about what tests people use. Mm-hmm. If, if they spend money on a real lab test, like even alcohol, for the last 80 years, alcohol would only be in your system like two days for the average urine test. Mm-hmm. But now they don't test, they don't look for the alcohol. They look for metabolites that are produced from your your kidneys and shit, whatever, processing the alcohol. So they can find alcohol in your system like a month back now, which like fucked over thousands of people across yeah, really. the country when that changed with probations. It's really interesting. Yeah, I will- can't tell you, when I was young, when I smoked weed every day, every day, I, I had I had this idea, and I I still kind of hold to it a little bit. Um, the idea that you can judge someone's intelligence by the whether or not they could pass like a as, as an expected drug test, it's like something that they indicator. were expecting and come on. It's yeah. like if you can't, if you can't like get your shit together enough to like, it's, you know, with, for me it was always just weed. It was the thing that you know I had to worry about. But like if you can't like not smoke for you know a few weeks and and you know get it out of your system. Or at least, like, do all the detox shit and, like, work your ass off at it. Like, if you're not capable of doing that, you're a fucking idiot. I I don't know. It's an indication. But, uh, I mean, what about people who are apathetic or, like, I, I feel like you should, if, if you know I you have that much time, the, you should be able to cheat it, too. Like, one way or another, you should pass it. It's like right, you right. Yeah, college, if you, right? Whether if you're cheating it or not, that's fine. You're still, you're passing it. Like, sure. whatever, you know. Get your fake piss or whatever, you know, get the Ziploc of some, your best friend's piss, you know, taped to your leg or whatever the fuck you're doing. Yeah. You know, there's a system in place where you're you're going to pass the drug test. Prepared, yeah. Yeah. Um, the the apathy, I think that's a different story. Exactly. That, that, I, yeah, you can't, you can't, I can't judge on that. That's like a, you know, fucking whatever. It's a wild approach. But it's, you know, depending on the circumstances, if it's like for a job interview, that's whatever. If it's like you're going to, you're on probation or something, oh, that's a I little know. different. I, there, it was always so interesting when you would get high with someone right before you know they're going to fail their probation. Because <laughs> it, <laughs> it's like, 
all right let's i guess we'll do it big but you're a fucking idiot you know yeah. what i mean like <laughs> yeah <laughs> might as well blow it the fuck out because you're going you're, to jail <laughs> you uh you're an enabler yeah. <laughs> in that case 100 percent. i love enabling what a fun <laughs> pastime now i will say that was our i i've noticed you know i am a drug addict and i think about drugs every fucking day even though i'm not using them i you know feel like the last episode got got some of that shit out of my system. Now, I'm going to make, I'm working on speech patterns, trying to, to make some modifications. And I'm also going to try not to, uh, like, box myself in as a heroin addict as much as I sometimes do. Because I enjoy the aesthetic. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I like repping my junkie pride, but I also don't want to always box myself in as much mm -hmm. you are more you are more than that and i i hope that you recognize that and a little but bit I also <laughs> i also <laughs> i also understand that that respect of that grimy aesthetic yeah part of that that you know that's a very serious part of your life that not a lot of people can claim I just I, and be in the situation you're in. I identify with it so much, and if uh, I feel so out of place in ninety nine percent of my life, you know, like I'm, I'm, I have a job doing medical coding now, and I've. It, it's so weird because I'm isolated. I haven't seen anyone I work with, and they've never seen me. It's like perfect for what my situation is, but I, at the same time, I clearly don't fit in or identify at all and i've been able to covertly in a way start this career and in no other parts of my life am i around i don't know people who have made a lot of the decisions i've made so it's very uh i'm very i feel like outside alienated and internally alienated but i'm gonna i'm trying to make an effort like i feel like it was important for me to say a lot of the things I did, but I also don't like how I sound sometimes. I'm trying to just take a slightly different approach, but I, I think my overall point is, I guess, in reflection, wh where do you... I never imagined we would do 100 episodes together. Yeah. What I, has it been for you? What, what's we're not We're not doing one of those, like, in review, this is everything which i don't know i feel like it's worth taking a sec honestly i i did see us doing 100 episodes together i didn't realize how i mean you know mathematically if we're doing it weekly it makes sense that that it would come up this quickly but i but it still feels like it took it was a lot faster than expected like like i said mathematically it's like okay obviously you know once a week for 50 weeks or for a hundred weeks, it's, you know, just a little less than two years. That's like, it feels obvious that that's, but it's surprising that it's all already been two years that we've been doing this. Yeah. I, I was listening to, uh, a my brother, my brother and me, and they were talking about how they had a couple weeks off and it was a bummer because anytime something cool or shitty happened, they were like, oh, I'll get to talk about that on the podcast. Like, it made shitty stuff suck less because you know you have a built-in outlet for things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, f I feel like having a consistent side project that wasn't just, just my art, something I'm doing alone, but was something you're building more and knowing you always have an outlet like that. And, and incidentally, my... I've been in therapy shit for <clears throat> over five years, very consistently, and it's been slowly petering off. Like, I, life's changed a lot. My therapist's circumstances have changed. My circumstances have changed. I don't go how I used to need to. And it's really nice to have a built-in outlet, too. And it's very different. But to, to work with someone to talk through or make something, I, I really appreciate having that every week. I, I do too. I, I've said it a, a, a lot of times before, but I do feel like this is, this is definitely the closest I've ever had to therapy. Um, 
I, and, I know what you mean. It, it's funny, it does, but I know, I know what you mean. Yeah, I, I do. I feel that way because, I mean, I was actually discussing this with a, a coworker not long ago where I described, you know, some prep shifts with uh, another one of my coworkers. It was like, it's like therapy to me because I, I've kind of lived at least the last 10 years or so of my life, like kind of an open, open book. I don't have... I don't feel the need to like hide shit or like if there's something going on in my life, I'll talk about it. Just, you know, you, have, one of, you would do have an in- inclination to some privacies though, but you're, you're an open yeah. book. You, you wouldn't hide anything, but you do have some private inclinations. Yeah. 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 The, I feel like I get into deep discussions with people very quickly and very easy Mm-hmm. I, I, cause those conversations are way more fun, Yeah, but it's like, we can do the small talk, chit chat shit all day long if you want to, but that's, there's nothing there. It's like, it, you know, when you have to be with someone for more than, you know, 20, 30 minutes, it's like, let's like, what's going on in your life? Like, how does that make you feel like this is what's going on with me? This is how I, I learned to, that I have this weird behavioral thing that's based on you know, shit in my past or something like that. Like I, I love that shit. And I, I realize I get that a lot through this, not so directly in that manner. We do have conversations like that a decent amount of the time, but it's mm-hmm. not like, I don't know. It's just the, it's the being heard thing. I think I don't, I don't know if I recognize, I don't, if I um, associate with that directly, but I feel like that's a, that's a thing that we all kind of need. Like just as a human, like we need someone to hear or us or like to be, to be felt like you're, to feel like you're heard. I don't know if that's actually a real thing or not, but it feels like I, I see that theme a lot and I feel like this is definitely a, a method that gets me there, you know, especially when I have coworkers and stuff that are like, oh, I listen to the show and. I was thinking, you know, while you were saying this, I was thinking about this and what do you think? And like continued discussions from episodes into my real life. And I think that's cool. Definitely. Man, I I was just looking for this quote. It was by a philosopher. I'm going to be ashamed. I'm going to butcher it. But the, the quote was something to the effect of... You will never understand me. I will never understand you. And we both will die having never been understood. It was something to that effect. And it was, it, to me, that is such, so beautiful because it, mm. we, we all strive for that so much. I, compared to art, this has been, I've always been very self conscious about speaking. I definitely was the kid who, for school, whatever. I fucking love reading. I can read voraciously, like a, a little lizard. I'll just eat up a book. <laughs> but if I have to read that... <laughs> that, that classic trope of lizards eating books. <laughs> Big book lizard. But if I have to read to, you know, the class or whatever, it wasn't happening. I would just mm-hmm. take the F. I, there, I, There's still so much to be desired of, at, at least for, speaking for myself, my communication skills. But I, I feel so much more confident than I did 100 episodes ago. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. I like learning something every week, having, having a project to work on. My, my family is always, my, my siblings in particular, it, they'll, they'll think this is funny. But they're always comically blown away by the random shit I know. Like, <laughs> like not that I, like, I think of my my brother as much smarter than me in so many ways. He just beat me at chess, that bastard. Uh, we've been <laughs> playing chess lately. And John, John, who does our intro music, Approaching Human, just beat me at chess, and I'm pretty salty with him. <laughs> I, we got our rematch going, but I like knowing a little bit about everything I can. I'm we're mm-hmm. bo- We both share a great curiosity. And while, while I think... It is impossible to ever fully understand anyone, including ourselves. I feel like having a structured, regular opportunity to talk to someone who's your friend repeatedly is its just about as close as you can get to, to being able to, 
I don't know. Brooch. Is it brooch? <laughs> my broaching? <Breach? laughs> I'm not breaching. Am I broaching? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know the context like, of To approach. Know. Not but it's not it's not the same word. Like you're <sighs> nearing understanding. Isn't brooch a word? <laughs> I don't, I don't, not in the word, not in the way that you think it is. I am think I, a brooch is a thing that you wear like a pin. I know it's that, but can I think you think a brooch something? is the right word. Broaching brunch <laughs> for li- lizard books. <laughs> no, I, it, it's been, it's been awesome. I, I, it has sur- far surpassed my expectations, but. As positive as a lot of it has been, at the same time, it has left so much to be desired. Mm -hmm. I I feel like we, with consistency and time, we can build something. And that's been, that's really cool because I've never had that in any other creative pursuit I've gone for. Yeah. I I definitely recognize the, I I get the, um, the little, not expertises, but like knowing about shit in a conversation. I just had a, it wasn't it wasn't that long ago, but someone had brought up something about like black market organs or something, and I was like, I know about that. <laughs> yeah, like, I know some shit about that. Or um, what was the other one was something about um, Van Gogh, and I was able to like speak on him and his life and his works and stuff like that. And you know, it's cool to have that little knowledge in your back pocket that you can pull out, and it's not you know useful really for life, but it's definitely good in like conversations and stuff. Um, it makes you look smarter for do- goddamn sure. Broaching definition to raise a sensitive or difficult subject for discussion. I'm broaching. Oh, I don't, I don't think I've ever heard it used that way. That's crazy. I don't know if it's an improper use to say I, I am broaching. I, I don't know. I don't know if I used it right or not, but I, I was on to something. <laughs> Speaking of our different episode things that you know we've gone into you called me about maybe about a year ago maybe a little less and we had this discussion where you told me that each episode (laughs) that is it feels right for the number that it's assigned yes like for example um i'll say seinfeld's banjo okay now I yeah. want to ask you, yep. c- can you tell me which one it is? Is it number three? It's number four, actually. That Oh, my God. That felt like a three. No. Uh, three was made me want to cry and die in a war. <laughs> but honestly, I felt like it was one of the one of the crazier things you've ever called me and said. It, every I, podcast I, I, title I, has a feel. And, and the, the feeling of the title very often syncs up with the number episode, right? So that was an early one, so I can see where we didn't have the algorithm together yet. And I was going from memory. I thought that was actually the third episode. I, But it, it's something with the evens and the odds. 99 uh, Dope Gang and Dope Gang accessories, that is meant to be episode number 99. Now, let me let me ask you this, and you can just you can tell me even or odd to start with. Okay. Which episode is Free Will... Oatmeal over eggs. That's not, that feels like a 33 to me. It's a 33. That's a hard take off the bat. It's actually 38. Fuck, dude. It's I'm an off even, tonight. It's an even number. Last time we last time we did correct. this, I got like eight. eight yeah, yeah, in a you row actually, correct. you did. We also had probably a, a 50 less episodes than this. <laughs> yeah. I feel like so, I'm doing it by memory. But I've, e- even if it's a very, like, subconscious or or even like partially conscious when i'm typing the title for the episode it feels right it feels like when you put the uh, the last piece in a puzzle or like you do the right brush stroke on a painting where you're like ah fuck that makes sense it's supposed to be that way it's it's so artismo <laughs> it's like well, okay, I, let me get two more two okay. more real quick okay. the great cheese feast okay give me even or odd first I feel like that's an odd. That is an odd. That's an odd because it's cheese. Cheese is not even. <laughs> cheese has lumps. <laughs> this is how bipolar. There's a word for it where 
It's like a synesthesia of some sort. It, there is a specific word for it. There's one, it's it's like a web. It's, it's something's web. And then there's another term for it too in psychology. But where you typically in a bipolar psychosis or manic state, you will branch words and ideas as you speak into new ideas. And And that's why often like someone's, conversation can be so rambling it's like an adventure you start out on and you don't know where it goes depending on the steps you take it informs what you're doing and so much of it is word association or um subconscious association of of feelings to words like talking about your mom makes you angry so you're angry about your mom and that takes you you know like there's it's all those weird jumps but i feel that similar connection in the titles and the numbers. And I don't believe in numeral. I, I don't, all that stuff like, it's cr- like weird and lame, but I, I'm, I, I don't, it might just even be like a, an artistic connection to something we're making, but I feel that with titles. I'm, I'm very title focused. I like on all my art, it's so important. And I think it's a very undervalued thing. I don't know. I feel it with the numbers. This one might be an easy one. This might be a, a too easy. Okay. That boy needs therapy. I'm fairly I actually, certain. I know this one from memory. I'm fairly certain that is an odd. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm fairly would, certain. Would you like to take a guess at the number? Uh, I feel like it was in the 50s. I'm not sure when we did. It was 43. Yeah. But I know it feels like an odd. Like, you can tell. Re- read a couple evens. Give me an even. Shoot me a couple evens. Uh, <laughs> Diesel Boy and the Phantom Pooper. That's an even all day, every day. That's definitely an even. Okay. What's next? If you haven't listened to Diesel Boy and the Phantom Pooper, go listen to it. No one listens to that one for it's some reason. Our most hated episode. Yeah. No one. I don't know why. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah, um, just read me a couple evens. The Baldwin incident. It's at Baldwin. It's the B and the A's. It's the the Baldwin. That's a, that's an even. <laughs> it is though consonants are odd vowels and long that's even. <laughs> just look at baldwin that stupid fuck looks like an even he's not odd he's even he's even baldwin island warfare that's even because you have islands islands are calm and even can i tell you that's actually that's an odd number that's 65 now, I don't appreciate what you did there. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, warfare always is odd. So that, that's a, that should be a half. So, so you knew something was up. I knew, knew something, something was something up, but wrong. I, I didn't feel confident enough to voice it. So I'm going to work on my confidence going <laughs> <laughs> I tried to I tried to get you, and you know, I didn't. You got me. Yeah. But there's something to that. I, I feel like any... Any titling of something, I don't know, names are so important. Like with language, it's the whole like, do you see the the same color red I do? Does your definition of a feeling truly match my experience of that feeling? Words matter only as, as a representation for what we actually mean. And having that word is important because it allows us to communicate a shared knowledge the importance of the word itself is pretty meaningless, but we, we've we yet to figure out a way to truly converse exactly what we think and feel. So we have to use these representations. I don't know. I think a title to a piece of art, song, fucking podcast, whatever it is, it, it creates such a – it defines the outline of the box that experience is going into. Uh, I think that's something that should be done with much, much consideration. And I, it's very I, frustrating. There's my phone. It's very frustrating to me how oh much. Oh shit! Did your phone just vibrate? It did. Oh man, Steven, I don't know how to tell you this on our hundredth episode, but you're fired. <laughs> it was John too sending me YouTubers, but oh, uh, God damn it, John! Uh, you fucking asshole! You ruined it. Ruined the whole. This podcast. was supposed to be a celebration of our of our. <laughs> Our talents and what we've done. But think of how many artists have bad titles for a piece of art. 
It's, it's so common and frustrating. Or songs that have a bad title. Like, that, that can ruin shit. Absolutely butcher something that could be very important. Yeah, I think we have fantastic titles for... I think we do pretty good. I mean, we're going for a specific feeling, yeah. right? It, it's trashy. There's some humor, but it, it's also like we use a lot of a boldness too. And, and a ton of people, it'll be a major put off, but that it, it fits the aesthetic and energy we're, we're working with. But when you have like a, a song that, I don't know, there's just so many bad song titles that just mangle the box that song is being sent to you in. I would like to say we, we speaking of our titles, I took it as a, something very cool that you could search Seinfeld's banjo and we would be the first result that came up. We were one of the first. So we are, we are no longer the first. I I noticed that also what changed. Well, there, someone else made a uh, video uh, Seinfeld official soundtrack, <laughs> Kramer's crappy banjo, and that came out um, in 2021. Gotcha. And then someone else made one called When You're Dared to Play the Seinfeld Theme on Banjo, and that has 900 views. Good for them. Yeah. <laughs> now, <laughs> they took our they took our clout. It, it is kind of interesting how many other trash cats. Trash casts exist. Yeah, that was surprising. We were so fucking like decided that like, oh yeah, this is original as fuck. No one else is going to do this. Oh, There's well, a fuck lot of them. I'm glad we we originally thought to do trash cats, trash cat because I think we were just yeah. going to do one or the other. And both have so there's so like there's one podcast for every four people in the United States. Isn't that crazy? One one podcast for every four people? That's the latest estimation. God damn. 80% of those will be abandoned or there's 10 minutes or, you know, like, or people made a bunch of different failed ones, but there's so many podcasts. It's kind of crazy. Like with metal bands, like it, you, have you seen like the metal, metal, I think it's Metallicum Encyclopedium, that website. That catalogs metal bands. Mm-hmm, yeah, there's a couple different ones, but they a handful of like it's probably there's probably like a hundred people, but like m- hardcore metal heads that volunteer their time catalog both like you know label musicians and underground and punk and different like metal scene bands, mm-hmm. and they catalog all of their discography, what years members came and left, like in extensive detail even if your band has like one tape release from 20 years ago if someone has that information they will publish it forever on these sites and any combination of gore words you can think of there's like eight different bands (laughs) it it is shocking how many you know like piss shit Hey, it, fuck. Stuff like, yeah, like Anal Cunt had. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. I know all about them. Oh, uh, yeah. What that was one of those, balls. like, going through the list of the different names of artists on um, AZ Lyrics was the one I used to use. Yep. Just like, <laughs> what's the fucking, what's the wildest band name I can find? And that was, you know, it's in the A's. It came up first and was like, God damn, that's wild. And now they're so tame compared to these names now. But it's just wild, like. You think of any form of human ingenuity, creativity, I don't know. Anything you've made has basically been made before. You know, like we all have our own different twist or stroke or whatever the fuck that makes it ours. But it it does make you wonder sometimes. I, I, I see that with AI art a lot too, where, you know, we're training these algorithms on artists that have previously existed against their will like non-consensually with their work and you know, at some point someone else or a machine will will make nearly the exact thing you would go on to create but it already it's already been done before now the cool part of that the other side of that is what we can make can never be exactly duped. There could be a million things that exist just like it, 
but the one we made is ours. And that that's something I feel like is pretty special with with art in general. But it is it can be discouraging at times, whatever whatever medium you're you're working with. Like when the different mediums, like when the lounge singer did Cannibal Corpse. Uh, Richard Cheese. Compl- Richard yeah, Cheese. it co- yeah. completely changed the uh, the tone of it. But then think about if you, you can actually out- understand the lyrics and shit, and it's like, oh, this is really fucked. But think about, even if they're not all recorded on YouTube, think of how many other musicians in humankind's history have recorded that song in that same style or played that song, even if we didn't hear it. You know what I mean? Like it is mm-hmm. it, with enough time. What there's a I forget what the theory is called, but you give a a monkey a typewriter, and with enough time, they will write Shakespeare, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there is an element of what we think is so unique and original about ourselves that is, it's just like an, another cheap imitation, or you know, it's original to us. At the time, but eventually somebody was going to make the same thing. Steven, are you telling me that we're not the only ones doing this? That's part of what I'm saying. Are you telling me that there's other people with podcasts that discuss similar situations that we do? They're probably a lot brighter and funnier, but 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 they're not us. They're not. Mm. They're not the same. It's 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 like a even if it's a ninety nine point nine percent overlap. I, I don't know. If it's like the snowflakes, you know. I should look up other cis guys that have a podcast that talk about art and politics and religion. Oh, fuck. My computer just died. Oh, you're still... I still see you. I'm just fucking with you. Oh. The, the <laughs> That's idea a bad that, joke. That, the idea that Google exploded my computer with the search of... No, but it is like... No, I, I I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. I was making a goof, but I know exactly what you're saying. To do something, you're not. We're not doing. You know, when we talk about, you uh, know, fuck the podcast. Like you paint a painting. Mm-hmm. Five hundred years later, how would you feel if you knew someone painted a near duplicate version without ever having seen or known your painting to exist? Oh yeah, no, it, it's. It's fucking, it's whatever. It doesn't mean anything. It's, I mean, it, even if they did know, you know, they, it's the, you know, imitation the highest form flattery kind of thing, whatever. No, but like, it's not imitation. I, independently. Right, but, but I'm saying even if it was, I independently, it's. it's doesn't it, it devalue what you made? I don't think so at all. Isn't part of the beauty that it is yours unique, that no one else was going to do it exactly the way you did? Well, I, I. Well, I feel like the point that you were making earlier is that it, it is still unique. It's unique to you, and you made it. And it's Well, in all honesty, I, I feel very split. There's part of me that always would feel like I will always value my work, or typically most people's work, more than, you know, an AI system or an algorithm or some keywords typed, you know, I because a person made it or, or, it, or they felt something and turned it into something. Right. And I would feel that way, you know, about my own work. But then if I saw someone else, even if mine was slightly different, it had that little little piece of me in it, there is something, I don't know, I feel duality. There's, there's something degrading in the sense of you create something beautiful, but independently somebody else could have made the same thing. As an artist, you don't, like you don't, that doesn't – I'm not saying I think it's, like, bad or good necessarily, but there is something that feels strange about it. There is. I feel like – I don't know. I feel like that's something you got to come to terms with, that no, nothing that you do – it may be – it may be the first time that something like that's ever been done, but it's still – you could say that anything is derivative of anything else, right? Like – I mean, even a lot of your pieces, almost all of your pieces, you use samples of other, you know, classical works and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So it's not like you're creating that piece. You're making something new with that piece. And that's part of something I enjoyed so much about it. But I also could see how uh, the fucking artist that made the original would be 
could have very mixed feelings or people could feel like you're not making something new or, or I could feel like I'm making something that is inevitably going to be made by someone else. Like what's the point of carving the statue of David if if you felt that someone else is just inevitably going to do the same thing at some point? Is it ever truly uniquely ours? That's all. Uh, that's all. Um, I'm, touch. I'm just feeling it out a bit. Yeah, I I feel like this this goes back to the conversation we had a few episodes ago, where it was like, what what that art means to you, the process of making that art, because in 500 years you'll be dead. You know, let's say even like right now, someone puts out a piece that is you're going like, to processor for product. Yeah, pixel for pixel, it's it's your work, and you're like, this is. You know, this is mine. I made this. And they say, no, like, I, I've never seen your work before. Like, I've never, like, they can, you know, somehow they have proof or something and you can tell that they don't, they're not familiar with your work. They just stumbled upon the same process and put mm -hmm. it together. And the the difference is I can see where that could be a bummer, but also it's, I feel like you put a lot of value into the end result for someone that spends a lot of time in the process and puts a lot yeah, of focus sure. on the need to be doing it you put a lot of pro a lot of um value on the the destination rather than the journey yeah we've talked about that a bit before because i i really only care about the product over the product makes it sound like a like a financial or, or of something for gain. It's it's a thing but, that you produce. Yeah. It's a it's like a hunting trophy for myself. It's mm -hmm. something that, that's mine, my my little honor to myself or, or proof I existed or whatever. And I enjoy the process most of the time. There's a lot of time I don't, but I overall enjoy the process, but I really only care about what's finished, what I what I can feels there. I don't know, but in your in by comparison, it can make things feel flimsy sometimes. I can, I can, I imagine that makes it the the process feel much more like a like a chore sometimes. rather than it is a thing that you enjoy doing. Uh, I feel like less like a chore, but there's time I've touched on it before. But there's times where like I feel like I'm in a wildly <clears throat> like aggressive hypnotic state. Mm -hmm. I, I often will work on something that's very calming in a very deeply troubled mind state. But I, I, I feel like that is a way of funneling that opposed to that working itself out in my life uncontrolled it it feels it feels like a way to to put that into something but there there's a ton of time I'm working on something that I will pride myself on for the rest of my life or like allows to give me purpose but while I'm making it I'm deeply unhappy now I find that I find that juxtaposition pretty rewarding though how quickly do you go it's like a artist trope. It's like a real thing, right? We're like, you make something and then immediately it's like, all right, fuck that thing. I need this. That doesn't matter anymore. I need to make something else. It's like, that's old shit. I don't even like it anymore. And maybe it's not, you don't like it anymore even, but like, I'm not looking at that anymore. I don't want to yeah, do, you yeah. know, how much of that do you get? And how, uh, or how quickly does that set in for, for pieces? Like how, how old does a piece have to be for you to be like, nah, like don't recognize me for that. Recognize me for this shit. This new shit. Normally, <clears throat> normally like a couple years back, I, I don't associate with what it was at all. Now but that's, I, that's good. That's interesting. Yeah, but I also feel like, like I move on right away right now. Not as much just out of the shape of like life restrictions right now. So it gives me, a little more buffer before and after time, which is 
and I get to spend way more time on what I'm making. There, there's some I'm trying to take the positive and kind of ignore the negatives a bit right now. Right. But I I think I feel like I'm kind of okay with compared to a lot of artists because I I move on right away, but I also allow myself to kind of like masturbate in in things I have already done. Where a lot of days I might not looking back on my work, I might not like any of it. There's definitely a lot of those days too, but I think it's pretty important to remind yourself of what you have done. And there's there's days if I know I'm not going to actually work on any art where I still feel like it's important to go back and look at what I did do. Yeah, especially there's definitely still pieces I'm sure that stick out and you're like, "Yeah. This was cool." This was like I I still feel this. I I, rem- I remember that vibe when I was putting this together or something and like you can just still draw in inspiration on, from that and bring it in, especially if it's been a few years, bring it s- something from that cycle that back into your, you know, what you're doing now. And I think that's a, I mean, you see a lot of artists do, I don't know about so much anymore. I don't know if that's it's really a style anymore, but I know for a while it was like, you see it a lot with like Monet and shit where they'd go do like sets. And it'd be like a like a, a year or two of just doing the same like a motif yeah. or a theme or something. They'd focus on something, and you would have all these pieces that were like very similar in nature, or very similar in colors and in style and little collections or movements of their work. Yeah, and it's not like to be representative of their entire catalog worth of work, but it does show a time period in their development, and you have a bunch of pieces from this this time period. And a lot of the times, like I said, they all kind of look the same or they have the same vibe. What, you know, in Monet's sense, it was very literally like it's all fucking water lilies and shit for a long time. Yeah, like I, I didn't know he had the whole Japanese woodblock influence, you know? Yeah, you know. Or it was sh- a movement of his his career. Yeah, and it, it, it's it's stuff like that that I feel like, I think that's a healthy way to go about Doing stuff like that, you know, I remember when I drew more a long time ago, when I drew more often, it would be like immediately after drawing something, I would, it was like, this is dead to me. You flip the page of the sketchbook and on to the next. Yeah. Let the fucking graphite run into each other in the, in the sketchbook. And like, it's just going to get all blurry and fucked up. Cause I'm not, I'm not going to fucking frame this. Like it, it, it means nothing to me now. It's the think, chase of of the artist, right? Yeah, That's, yeah. I think that that time period that you you gave a, a few years, you know, like that's that's a healthy time to in still be invested in this, you know, this what you're working on. So, like something that's a couple years old, you're still like, this is still my modern work. This is still relevant to what I'm doing now. Before you, you know, ditch it. Yeah. That, that's, I, I think I think ditching it at some point is also you know very important, obviously, because that's what drives you to make new shit. But I, I feel like that's I'm just, I'm talking shit, but it's you know I'm, I'm proud of the way that you look at that. I think that's cool. Thank you. I I think that's like the coolest part of like there are so many artists or friends we have that just could do such amazing stuff, but they never documented any of it. Where you're like, in my point of view from a young age was, and I think it was from watching contemporary artists I appreciated, typically people that worked in video, music video, vlogs, like whatever the fuck they were doing, it felt like if you, if (laughs) Pixar didn't happen. Like, if you didn't document your art, <laughs> I I don't give a fuck about it. You didn't make it. Like, unless you can yeah. prove you did it, you can't tell me, like, all oh, that drawing I did on this, you know, this tag I did on this building was so cool, but it's gone now. You'll never see it. To me, that's, like, such a waste. I, I felt so adamant. Every fucking doodle or note that I wrote, I wanted a fucking copy of, and to me, that's been re- very rewarding. Like the coolest part of having a massive portfolio to look back on it. You know, I'm I have no shame at all in saying ninety 
whatever percent of my work is trash, but I, I can, you know, I have hard drives with 10,000 pieces of art since grade school on it. I can, I can. Yeah. You, you gave me a big folder full of shit. Point. Yeah. You're fucking, um, liquid diary shit. Yeah. And, um, a, a few other like different shit you were working on. What was it? Uh, Seroquel slumber. Yeah. Does that sound yeah. right? That was a little movement for a sec. Yeah, yeah that was cool shit. It was like Seroquel slumbers. I got, I got a, you know, fucking that was over ten years ago. That's you know wild. Yeah. But that's what I like so much is, it, it, let's say I'm having like suicidal day, like garbage, want to end my life day. Yeah, and I, I don't do this every time I'm having a bad day, but it it is. It, it's really helpful to be able to look back on a body of work. And even if 99.9% is garbage, like you said, there, there's something you can find in that, that pile of shit that is a little bit shiny that you can be like, Hey, this was, this was kind of cool. Like I have something, it gives you something to take pride on. Yeah. Uh, that's, I just really care about that, that end product because of that you know because i i can't i feel like i can't quantify or remember the process you know it's it's all like emotional blurring all that matters is what what you finished what you got the what you got the picture of what you can prove to to yourself or someone you care about ideally that that exist it existed do you get when you look at stuff like i've had like darker times when I've gone back and looked at old work that I've, I was also feeling like depressed and shitty and whatever, when I made it and looking at it like in a, not in a way that it was like, Oh, I'm proud of this work or like, this was cool that I did this. It was like, Oh yeah, I've been here before. And this, I got through it. Like I, I stood over top of this and, and, and got on with my life and now I'm here now. Um, I've, I've had that on at least one occasion that I can like remember strongly. Um, before I looked at something that I did in the past and remembered the, the thoughts that were going through my head when I made it. And that helped before psychologically. I give my thoughts on that. Let me, let me mirror that back at you with with the preface that <clears throat> t- 10 years from now we'll be able to do that with these recordings and it, oh, it'll yeah it'll be you know occasionally do that anyway but i i think it matters a lot to have to have evidence archive of our time i don't know but I, no, what, I, I, how do you I agree with, with your your stuff. Do you? I, I have some thoughts on it, but I want to hear what you think when you look back on on art like that. On art like that, typically it's like yeah, it's fucking whatever. I, honestly, I gave almost all of my old pieces to my parents, and it was like I don't. I had I a remember. whole bunch of shit that I made while I was in Toronto for school, and I I, I just gave it all away. Cause I had it like either on my walls or like on a, you know, little post-it board, like little, you know, small pieces and stuff. And it was like, I want to bring this back with me here. Just, I invite, I had like a party where I invited people over and told them like, whatever you fucking want, just take it. Why would you do that? To me, that, that marks like a, to me, that sounds like a marking of the, your end of artistry as a, as a goal. I took pictures of of it. I have like photos of it, but it was like, you know, those, I don't usually go through them you know it's one of those like if i'm cleaning up a hard drive or something i'll like i'll see the folder and like oh let me just click and see a couple of these real quick and then and then that's it now i would or i'll throw this out this may be a massive projection of which i am known to do Mm -hmm. regarding your (laughs) art i would argue your parents having your art is is a form of safekeeping that it is is oh yeah for sure they are just I could have easily it thrown, it in, thrown it in the trash. But they're just safe holding it till the day you have it again. Yeah. My, well, my mom's got multiple pieces hanging up on her walls. 
Sure. Ones, ones that honestly I was prepared to throw in the fucking trash. trash. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a, that's what moms do. Is I had a they, lo- they low one, key love that shit. Already. Yeah, they, they love, <laughs> 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 parents low key love that shit. When um, there's one piece that I, I was just fucking around with acrylic paints and I ended up doing like a an owl face thing and it wasn't like a piece that I was like super proud of or anything. It was just I was just trying to do something yeah. and um. My mom loves it, and she she has it hanging up in her like main hallway. When you walk in the door and you like turn towards the stairs, you see it, and it's like, I think that's cool. You know, I wouldn't hang it up in my place. They love it, but that's you made me. It. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, um, you know, it's shit like that. I, I have a whole portfolio full of like all of my shit through grade school, all the different, the board shit we had to do for school. We had to come up with like, first it was only five pieces. And then in high school, it was like, you gotta do five pieces from school, five pieces from home. And it was like, Oh shit. Like I got to do work at home now. Isn't that uh, what the, the grade school stuff is the most surreal to look back at. Yeah. Yeah. What stupid child made that? How was I the same person just drawing Dragon Ball Z characters, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the looking at the stuff, I feel like, like I said, I do it every now and then. But like the physical thing of it is weird to me to keep. Like I I don't there's only a couple of my own works that I actually have hanging up. Actually, I take that back. There might just be one. And it was kind of an accident piece. It was an ex-girlfriend of mine. We were doing um, shit with paint and we decided, oh, let's do like body painting and see how that looks and like see how that goes. And (laughs) so I poured paint on her and then took a piece of paper and like put it up to her chest. And the way (laughs) the paint is organized on the, the way it looks is very cool it don't it has like it's like rorschach test like mm. i'm kinda, skeptical but it, i like i like it, the idea of it yeah it wasn't meant to be like a cool piece or anything sure. but i really i really ended up liking it a it's lot it's a cool thing that happened and it's a like a a scar i don't know of a of a time right like a yeah little- there there's definitely there's definitely the some of the memories from that but overall like really i i've Cause I've thought about that before. Like I have really bad memories from that relationship and like, I don't like to, you know, think about it all that much in my, you know, when I'm on my own, but I enjoy that piece, the final product of that so much that I don't mind having it up and looking at it. That's cool. But yeah, shit like that where it's like, I don't, I feel uncomfortable hanging up my own artwork when I know, I don't know. Like I, I did that. I've been there already. I saw it before. Like, even if I made something now that we were talking about doing something, you know, at the French portrait of my cat over the bed or something, <laughs> yes. like something like that, that could be, you know, fun and cool. It's like, I'll probably end up making it and then, you know, say, fuck it. It's that like, would be so epic. You have to hang it up. Yeah, yeah. I'd have to hang it up somewhere. Frame worthy. Yeah. I have more pieces of your artwork up than I do anything else on the walls. <laughs> Honest, I've, I mean, I've told you this before. It's so, it feels semi strange to me when I see someone else have some of my work up. But it's, it's a uh, more than that. It's incredibly humbling because I, it's, you know, I occasionally hear from people that really like things I do, but I can't, I can't really truly feel that. Mm-hmm. Where. If, and to me, that it, I think it's so cool. But it's a, the primary thing is for myself, where that's that's like the the coolest bonus. But it it feels like it it feels hard to understand that some someone else would be seen or or caring about seeing something I made. Right. I feel I feel like a lot of artists concentrate on that a lot. And not, not that I think it's that's a good or bad thing, but I don't identify with that as much it, it's always it always trips me out which is i enjoy sometimes but it's a good tripping out yeah yeah is there a bad tripping out well i, I do for me looking back at 
certain parts like uh like looking back on that liquid diary to me is deeply upsetting like it, <laughs> i enjoy doing it i'd say like twice a year i look back on that particular book but it, it feels it feels heinous that i was allowed to ever be that way that i that i ever like it feels so visceral and i don't understand how the adults or <laughs> people in my life could allow me to function that way like i i just it is it's overwhelming yeah it, it is the, the it's overwhelming the piece itself is odious yeah yeah it's it's real it's real fucked and it's definitely not descriptive of your work your current work at all at all there's there's a there's a th- through line through i think all of my work but it it's so different but i can yeah. see it going back to like high school grade school like childhood stuff there there's something that's always been the same but it has changed shapes along the way but that particular era of work I, i've seen my like blood on paper with lunatic ravings so much my shit feels like i'm reading I see it more with poetry and writing when I look back at that shit. It just feels like, holy fuck. Like, I was so f- fucked up and, like, confused that it, it, it's overwhelming and it feels, like, genuinely disturbing to look back on now, how I used to think and feel. Do you, I mean, you know, because we were kids then. Yeah. Like, that being given that freedom to create i feel like that that you know in my head i would think that that helped you like because you're pushing limits that's what kids do right you're just pushing the limits and see what you get away with and what what works and what you like out of it do you feel like you got that from i mean like that's definitely i feel like the most brutal shit you've ever done yeah you know, I think there's one more brutal thing, but it it's so cheesy looking back on. But I will say, I, I love my parents. They're the best. But my throughout childhood and high school, uh, th- not always, but the, the trope, whatever, is that teenagers hate their parents, but it's not genuine. It's, it's a phase, whatever. Yeah. For large parts of my youth i genuinely hated my parents and my family in general like there there are parts of my life whether it was john my sisters definitely my parents i i i was so fucking crazy i i felt like i could have been one of those kids that killed their family that that doesn't feel uh, like hard to get to for where i was at i was gonna say the number one thing i used to think and still think all the time is like this especially about the liquid diaries like this work is the type of shit they find in the home of a kid who went fucking Col- bonkers C- columbine kid like yeah. I, I mean I, it's so crazy i wore you, uh, you sweatshirts owned, that said columbine on it to school every yeah day. you like, fucking owned that shit <laughs> <laughs> that's so crazy so you repped that hood real hard <laughs> so fucking hard saint eric and saint dylan that was my shit at the time but I think my par- if I was a parent, I'll put it this way. If I was a parent, I would do a lot of things very differently than my parents. But despite that, what I would say is the greatest gift of understanding they gave to me was they always, always supported me doing art. So even even if they they didn't even want me listening to metal or like wearing black or whatever but if it was something i drew or made even if they found it disgusting they still were supportive of which looking back on i i see i see so much wisdom how they handled a lot of things that would be really difficult to deal with from your child and i remember one time in high school before going to SCPA, I had some drawing that it was kind of cool at the time. I had, like I was only doing ink pen. I was super 
super stylistic, something I would never look like my current stuff, but it was very surreal, contemporary, whatever at the time. And it was like a, a dude with the cross being shoved down his mouth where you could see the cross extend through his belly. But it was mm-hmm. in the, this weird swirling abstractness. And I think I sent it to some chick I knew on AIM, right? This is mm-hmm. way back. Oh, yeah. And I remember this at some point, I think it was like a decent amount of time later, but it had some like suicidal scrawlings on it, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> some like, fuck God, I want to kill myself shit. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And like uh, weeks, months, whatever passed. And it was after after Tony killed himself and the school was like involved with me at that point. Um, and some therapist pulled me out of class and they had print shitty inkjet printers of these pieces of art and they're like trying to get me to go to some mental health place and this had happened like multiple times where my art was getting me into trouble right Mm -hmm. yeah but i remember even at that time my parents devout catholics my dad a catholic school principal that they had my back against the school and never you know, I'm sure they would want to confront what I was addressing in mm-hmm. the art, but they never once, like, I don't know, like, shamed me for the art itself, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, super cool. Um, I don't I could, remember how I got to that, but it feels important. <laughs> do, do you feel like, and, and I, I feel like there's there's two ways that you could have taken that. You know, your your parents' support over your artwork. I think a lot of... At the time, I didn't understand that. I was very angry with them. <laughs> that, yeah, I was, that, that's exactly where I was going. Where some people would be like, I'm making things that should piss you off. Like, I, I'm i actively trying to rebel in a, in, a, in a sense that, you know, when you say it like that, it doesn't sound as cool as it feels when you're young. But it's like, I'm actively trying to push the limits of what's what's acceptable and you're being very accepting and that's making this harder for me. Like that's driving, you know, I can f- see where that would drive some people, you know, up the fucking wall. It would, it would be the adverse reaction to what they want. They want the shock value of that. But when you see the support from your parents on doing something that would typically be so out of line and, um, especially like I imagine in, in your home, like the religious, you know, shit of it would be a, a real big fucking taboo typically. Well, I think, I think overall, I mean, it was never my intention for it to be seen by anybody except the friend who I guess sent it to my parents or school or whatever, but you know, a fucking narc, by the way. Yeah. What loser. <laughs> oh, your friend killed yourself. <laughs> 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 We're gonna contact your school. Oh. No, oh, I'm worried about you, <laughs> <laughs> loser. <laughs> but I, I, you know, by the time I wanted them to understand, I think that was the frustrating part. Is I think I, I did a lot of art or things that would have been looked at as rebellious that I never felt like were out of rebellion, but of of wanting someone going back there earlier, wanting someone to understand. To, to be able to have a conversation I, I might not have been able to have at the time, but wanted right. to, to feel understood for. But I don't know. I respect that. Well, speaking of art, <laughs> <laughs> cool art. This is a great example of art that <laughs> would be very difficult to replicate snarky puppy hell yeah look at the track lingus this is a contemporary jazz fusion-esque jam band mixed group rotating member some core member strange solos 10 minute double piano mashes genre bending wildness they've they've been around for a long time but if if you haven't listen to him before and you want to listen to something that really pushes the bounds in the lines of uh john zorn mike Patton, naked city whatever 
Look up Snarky Puppy Lingus, not Skinny Puppy. The snarky. Great Industrial Act, Snarky Puppy. It's it just a but a, a group of I was gonna say a collective of very talented musicians and class classically trained, yeah, but avant garde in nature. Super like cool, shit. master I'm level, a huge fan. Yeah, really cool stuff. Next, check out Clowncore. If anyone has listened to the old, <laughs> at this point, old metal band, uh, Circus of Dead Squirrels, they are a crazy metal band that did like it was like circus genre death metal stuff, mixing lots of like organ and weird samples. Really fun band. Most of it sucked, but they had their really really unique moments this is not the same but it it's in the same it has the same essence i think the group is i don't know if the group is called clown core or whatever but it's guys in clown masks screaming to metal in porter potties and it is just such a joy it's not so, listenable for long but yeah, such a pleasure it's, it's brutal and the 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 kind of kitschy part of like the the part that's like oh it's so the niche clown and horn fucking donkey. wild as fuck and it's like it reminds me of uh screamer claws in the way that it's like this is very brutal, much. and i can i can animal respect. crackers in my- <laughs> <laughs> it's so brutal but like i can't listen to it for more than a couple minutes yeah for sure and then for visual arts I've talked about them before, this collective design, semi-oculus, I've been fortunate enough to be a part of on and off throughout their different issues, but they are currently working on number 15. It's their, it's an anniversary issue that they, they reached out to select artists that had done stuff with them over the years, and I'm very proud to be a part of it. It's the 15th issue Check them out. Instagram. They have a, I think it's a Tumblr blog, but if you look up semi Oculus, they, they come up. And the the guy who runs it is based out of Estonia. And it's a very, very dark, wild collection of sur- modern surrealist work. And this next issue should be really cool. I'm super excited about it. So congratulations on 15 years. <laughs> you're, uh, you're, you're, almost there to our 100 years but they're getting there for sure yeah we believe in you keep your chin up kid (laughs) (laughs) i'm working on something right now of this old painting it's one of the baby bash paintings that i'm so enamored with where it's from that bible phrase the the bashing of the babies on the rocks Oh, you're and not talking about flood. You're not talking about the the American rapper Baby Bash. Is that a guy? I'm sure. That's a guy. I'm sure, there's like ten different Baby Bashes. <laughs> chess. We need to play more chess. That's been a cool development. Uh, I think palaces and pandas will always be an undervalued side arc of the Trash Cats, but I I think that's so cool what we've created or been have managed to do so I, we're definitely got to keep that coming every every now and again what are we do, what else are we doing i know we want to try to drop something 101 to make i don't know an effort post but where, where do you see things going um i think in the next within the next hundred episodes we'll have we'll have been bought out <laughs> by a large corporation and we will I don't be think so. we will be recording uh, our video and we will be required to wear um clothing with the name brands on it you know and uh i think max ideal eating whatever product that they make and dude imagine it'll be an it'll be an asmr podcast slash advertisement an hour and a half long commercial advertisement. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah dude fuck that i this is what this is what we could all right we're growing slowly mm-hmm. but surely Best possible outcome for our podcast. VTube video podcast. Oh, I'm down for that. But we do it with motion captures, do a little mocap, scanning we- <laughs> scanning our cats, and we VTube them 
to be our video avatar. So it just looks like our cats are giving each podcast. I think that's really good. It'd be amazing. I I got worried when you said mocap and I thought, am I going to, there's no way that we're going to have to wear those fucking suits in the middle of summer. Oh, you can do it with cell phone apps now. You just 360 scan. Like if you need a. We don't have to dress up like. um, It's crazy good too. The fucking Lord of the Rings dude. What was his name? Gandalf? No. Stupid little dwarf. Gandalf? The guy that played Smeagol. Smeagol. Um. God damn it! I'm not gonna rest until I know. Gandalf was such an ugly. A- Andy Circus, tall ass. He does like Andy every Circus does animal. all the mocap shit. Yeah, he was. Yeah, uh, Mike Patton did the zombies from uh, I Am Legend. I've actually never seen that movie. It's overrated. It's, it's, <laughs> it's pretty lame. I mean, it was fun when it came out for like the first. I heard half there's a, a really watch. brutal dog death in it. That's all I know about that movie. Hey, I'm a big fan of Brutal Dog Deaths. I don't even remember that one. I, honestly, I don't think it was a great dog death. I think it was there was just a high emotional attachment to that dog. Yeah, I think people were talking about... Oh, the dog uh, died. Specifically talking about, you know, like, does the do- dog die.com, and they said, like, mm. that was... In all of the memories of all the movies they watched, that is the most brutal dog death. There are any other Or the, the the most, um, I guess, touching. The one that affected them the most. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's what it was. I'm trying to think of any other big screen dog deaths that were notable. And you have the Resident Evil dog splitting. Some of that was uh, the uh, gra- FX shit, graphics, whatever, was pretty good on that for its time. But what other good dog deaths? Hmm. I feel like uh, there was a recent one with a shotgun, but I can't. It's just on the tip of my tongue, but I can't remember. Oh, oh, the movie we just talked about, The Farber's Dog and Funny Games. Oh, yeah. Yeah, The Funny Games, the the second one, was a ton of John Zorn, Naked City-esque music. I keep saying esque. Now, when you say the second one... There was an old Funny Games. It was like in the 70s. Everybody forgot about okay, it. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I, that's the one. I haven't seen that one. I've seen the, the, the 2007 one. one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was... It was fun. It was like a pointless. You were. Torture. I watched that with you at the movie theater. No, it was definitely at your somebody's crib. That's it might possible. Have been, yeah. yeah, it's in your parents' basement or something. Yeah, that sounds right. The music is what, or else it'd be a garbage movie. But the music redeemed it. It made it just captured that zany, I don't know, brutality. Children of Men. I have to go back and watch it again, because I, I do remember at that point, like, this was, that would, might have been the first time that I recognized that I was kind of looking into the eyes of, like, two sociopathic characters. Yeah. Like, the, the absolute disregard for emotion and There aren't life. The characters like that t- aren't done well enough most of the time. Like, uh, Yeah, they're usually, like, you know... Like Michael Myers or something, where uh, there's like something paranormal about him or something weird like that. It's well, like well, I hate that, but where it's like real people, then you see that it's like. Well, I think of American Psycho, right? Yeah. That's what comes. Oh my god, it's a good one. I, I don't. I liked I, it initially, but I feel like it's a bad Psycho. Like I, I don't feel like I feel like that is a really fun movie that the character really sucks. Like it's not a well-shaped psycho like it's so I, cliche I agree and disagree i i think that the it's a different psycho i think there's definitely it's a fun movie but yeah i, I think it's a more relatable psycho i don't think so not relatable in the sense that i'm like that at all but you can you recognize that person you know there's a sequel is there? There is. There's a woman psycho. It's American Psycho 2. I think it's actually mm. called that. Or American Psycho. It is called that. Isn't that cringe? And it's Mila Kunis. Isn't that cringe? A little bit, yeah. All right. I feel like being lazy. Let's get the fuck out of here. But any- is, is, is this podcast cringe? Cringe. Uh, final words. What are we? 100 episodes done. 100 more to come. I think we're going to do cool stuff. I want to do interviews with more people or any people. I got a couple ideas. 
We got to figure out what we're doing next week. But I, I, final appeal, and then give your final words. Anyone who's listened to us for this long, so, it's so cool. It's so cool to have anyone. Super fucking dope. So cool. Even even if we don't hear from people often, it's okay to just have lurkers, and it's cool. Anyone's willing to give us any amount of their ear hours per week. It's really cool. Yeah. I will say if don't don't just broadcast us. We don't we don't want you posting links or whatever. Just if you know anyone that you genuinely think is a trash cat such as yourselves, feel free to share. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that goes a lot longer of a way that recommendation word of mouth. That definitely works for me when people come up and say like, "Hey, I think you might like this." Rather than if I see it, you know, someone else posted on, you know, Instagram or something like that goes a much longer way with me of like, okay, I'll actually check that out. Yeah. That's the um, way to go. Yeah. Hell of respect to anybody that listens to our show. You're probably you're cool. Wide. Reach out to us. We're yeah, way more accessible exactly. than you might think. <laughs> yeah. We ain't hard to find. No. <laughs> <laughs> Out here in these streets. Any any final thoughts? No, it's been a good Just, time and I'm glad you reached yeah. out to me to start this podcast. It's been dope. Thank you. You have to say something important. This is your epic I did. Boss I just speech. said a genuine, sincere oh, thank you to you. I don't need sincerity. And you trampled over it. You know what, Steven? <laughs> Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. Fuck this podcast. We're never doing it again. Last episode. Last episode. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, it's yeah, great. Yeah, we'll probably do something cool next week. Yeah, for sure. Love you, bro. Love you too, G. Uh, what do we have? Uh, I'm scrolling through my thing right now. Uh, thanks again for listening, everybody. Yeah. Thank you to Approaching Human for the use of his music. You can find his work on SoundCloud at Approaching-Human. Thanks, Jeff. Make sure to check out the show page at Trash Cats Trash Cast on Instagram for news and arts from the show. Check out Facebook for the memes. And if you're, you know, feeling up to it, you want to do me a solid solid and you don't have any friends that want to listen to the show that you don't think would be the good fit, go listen to Diesel Boy and the Phantom Pooper. That's that. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to listen to that tomorrow. We're going to listen back and be like, oh, fuck, we should have used a different episode. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh I, speaking of, I'm scared to listen to the old episode. It's odd. Speaking of which, uh, yeah, Public Pressure Chaotic Steel, go listen to his music and pressure him to buy a microphone so we can do our episode with Chaotic, because that'll be awesome. Fuck yeah. We're going to do something with Approaching Human, something with Will, for sure. I think might be able to drag on Sam. We got a couple other artists we want to do. We want to do more stuff with, um, holy shit, I'm blanking. Your cousin, Keith. Keith Keithifer, our raccoon wrangler. Yeah, Keithifer. <laughs> yeah, if you're super worried, you can check out my trash yard on Instagram at SkyZix, S K Y Z A C X. And I think that's it. We'll see you guys next week or never. Hell yeah. That's going to be all for us today. Stay classy, eat trashy. Go fast, eat trash. For the hundredth time. <laughs> <laughs>